on. Training on. Foggy base off. Two one flight starting. Two one base off. Roger. Base on. Coming on. Coming on. Coming on. Coming on. Coming on. Coming on. Tower locking two one flight of two right to take off runway five. Runway five, clear for takeoff. This airplane is absolutely what we need. Just flew an hour mission, went out, did the embedded training where we were able to simulate an air-to-air -air engagement with uh, five bandits, uh, of which none of them were actually airborne, uh, and get the results on a, on a radar along with a targeting pod, and all of this is simulated. So there are no costs to any of those, but they were absolutely perfect. And they are the kind of things that we need to do in IFF today. And Lockheed 2-1, uh, showing T groups, north-south split. And Lockheed 2-1, targeting southern group. Lockheed 2-2, uh, targeting north group. Lockheed 2-2, Fox 3, two ship, north group. The T-50, with its simulator training, with its ability to link to ground-based trainers, with its live virtual constructive training, excels all other trainers on the market. The heart of this training has got to be the ground-based training system. I think it's the heart of the whole system. We just flew with the distributed training for one hour. The person in the, uh, in the simulator, we could talk to them while we were airborne. We had five bogeys to shoot down. We also had ground targets. It's all simulated, and it's all very advanced. So GB-32 is right at the center pillar on the bridge, and there's impact. When we graduate a pilot out of uh, IFF to go to F-35 or F-22, he's already experienced radars. He's already experienced targeting pods, air to ground work. He's already experienced air refueling. And in addition to that, he's been pulling Gs in air maneuvering environments. So he's exactly ready to go to that F-35 or the F-22, and we don't have to teach him all of that from day one in that aircraft. So we can save all sorts of time and all sorts of money, and more importantly, wear and tear on the fifth gen aircraft that we need to last as long as we can possibly get them to last. It's roll rates, it's maneuverability, it's feel in the air, to me, translates directly, one for one, with what students will feel when they move into the single seat F-22 or the single seat F-35. This is an easy airplane to fly. It's an easy airplane to land. So we can take a lot of those hours and put them in a simulator and get a really advanced uh, student graduate ready to go into the IFF and follow on into a fifth gen fighter, which is the future. I truly believe as students experience the total T-50 training system, not just the airplane, but the ground-based training system, including the simulators that we have, that actually link up with airplanes in the air, they're going to begin to experience what it's like to operate in a net centric environment. In fighters, we always talk about force multipliers. To me, this training system becomes a training multiplier. There is no comparison as to the way we're going to train compared to the way we train today. This is the Air Force. This is what the Air Force needs to do the mission for the 21st century of training fighters. Rocky 2-1 for runway 5, you are cleared for the option. And Rocky 2-1, that makes it stop. Lockheed Base Ops, Lockheed 2-1, one, code 1 for both jets. 2-1 one Base Ops, Ryder.